Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. In this video, I'll go through everything we know so far for update 43. The full patch notes and PTS with all the details will be up on Monday, July 8th, which puts this release date at August 19th for PC. They had a big live stream covering a lot of the new features, and the first one they went over is the new Home Tours feature. This will show up under your Group and Activity Finder page and will allow people to list their homes to easily be seen. And hopefully this will shed some light on some of the really awesome builds that other ESO players have put together. There will be an underlying system where you can recommend homes that you visit, and the ones with the most recommendations will show up on that Recommended tab. So essentially just a way to ensure that the best of the best get pushed to the top. Not really my area that I spend a lot of time with in ESO, but it seems like a really nice addition for housing enthusiasts out there. You can watch back through this video on the Bethesda Twitch page if you want to see all the little details of what you can do here. So the housing stuff we knew we were getting info on, but I saw Mike Finnegan was listed as being on the show, so I had a good feeling we'd be getting some other info too. I said on my stream right before their show started that I had a feeling it might be some infinite archive stuff, and sure enough, that's what the majority of the rest of the presentation was about. But I definitely didn't think we'd be getting as big of an update as we are. So first off, they're adding a new quest giver to the archive named Essa Linway. She gives a daily quest that targets marauders and fabled monsters. So just a little something extra to be able to knock out daily here. If I had to guess, this probably has the same loot table as the other daily that's already here. So you can get the fragments from the pieces you haven't collected, or if you've collected them all, then another set piece. But we don't have confirmation on that just yet. Then we have two new arenas within the archive, one ice and one fire based. So the arenas will be broken up into multiple sections that you can fight in. Seems like you'll just have a random chance to end up in one of these instead of the typical green everywhere levels that we have currently. They're shaking things up a bit with these new ones and also adding environmental hazards. So the ice arenas will have patches of ice that deal damage to you if you stand in them, similar to Maelstrom Arena. And the flame arenas will have these little fire pits. And Finn said that they'll shoot fire out of them at locations in the arena and also directly at the player. On top of that, there will also be 10 new bosses added. They didn't show any here, but they did give some examples. The Risen Ruins from Moongrave Fane, Draenos Valador from Cradle of Shadows, and Yondir the Butcher from Kind's Aegis. There will also be eight new verses and ten new visions. There were a couple of examples of these. A phalanx verse to call on ghostly soldiers to form a wall of defenders. You can also collect the new necrotic vision set to unlock an undead avatar transformation that allows you to empower yourself with each defeated enemy. So that sounds pretty cool. And he also mentioned another vision called quickened tinctures that will reduce the cooldown on your potions. There will also be two new marauders. One of those is going to be a werewolf behemoth. He said it's similar to Baylorg, and it will even include the fog like Baylorg has where your vision will be obstructed and you'll have to pay attention to where he's coming for you. And then also there will be a minotaur marauder named Zul Fimble. And the only thing he really mentioned about him is that he will charge at you. And then there will be some new fabled monsters to fight as well. These are the more elite adds that come in waves leading up to the boss encounters. The next new archive feature he mentioned was a new super super consumable, he called it, that can be used once per run, and this will allow you to turn into a random one of the four available avatars. And he said they added it because a lot of people don't really push far enough into the archive to put the visions together to enable that, so they wanted it to be something that more players would get to experience. And finally, with the archive, we're getting new class sets. Thanks to ESOsets.com for already having these posted. They look much better than the blurry screenshots I had from the live stream. Just note that these are all subject to change, not only throughout the PTS, but even possibly between what we're seeing here and what is on the PTS when it goes live on July 8th. And one more thing I will mention, Finn did have 2902 weapon and spell damage for these tooltips that we'll see. So assuming there were no other buffs present, you can get a decent idea of how these stack up to other sets. However, we have no way of really knowing for sure if he had champion points slotted or whatever else could be affecting those tooltips. So keep that in mind as you compare the exact amounts directly with what some of the other sets in the game are doing. We won't be 100% sure on these until the PTS goes live. So first up, we have the Dragonite set Pyrebrand. Your light attacks deal 1084 flame damage every two seconds over six seconds. Your fully charged heavy attacks consume up to three of your damage over time effects to deal 2384 flame damage in a six meter radius on the target, dealing up to 200% more damage to enemies below 33% health. This damage scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage and is increased by 20% for each damage over time effect on the target. So right out of the gate here, we have one that is pretty unique. Not really any other set that works like this one. Seems more targeted for PVP, but maybe some PVE setups could use it as well. It doesn't look like the dot from your light attacks alone is anything too special here, but the whole consume three dots with the heavy attack to make a big flame explosion sounds pretty cool. 
I definitely have a lot of questions about how the set will actually work. How does it choose which three dots to consume? Do status dots like bleeding, poisoned, and burning work? Seems like it could be fairly easy to have enough dots to trigger at the maximum value over and over pretty quickly. The execute scaling is pretty cool too. I could definitely see this one being nice in PvP where you have someone dotted up, then you go in for your burst to kill them with a heavy attack to make them explode. I assume this is also meant to go with the ardent flame line due to the way that it functions, even though it doesn't mention any of of those skills. It works very similarly to Seething Fury though, in that it builds stacks up for 60% more damage. So you could apply dots that also stack your Seething Fury stacks simultaneously, then heavy attack into a whip for a big burst from both this set and the stacked up whip damage getting 60% from both of those. I would like to see maybe something with the light attack portion that scales up the more that you apply that without using the heavy attack portion. So maybe if you keep light attack weaving for a certain time, that little dot gets a little bit stronger. I think this could potentially make it more interesting for PVE as you could do a standard light attack rotation for most of the fight and have a nice bit of proc damage there. Then towards the end, once that scaling starts ramping up, you could have an interesting execute option that decays are not really used to having. But we'll see where all the numbers end up exactly on the PTS. Definitely looks like a really interesting set design though. Next up is the Necromancer set, Corpse Buster. Consuming a corpse causes the corpse to explode, dealing 2805 magic damage to enemies within five meters. This effect can occur once every 0.5 seconds. Increase the damage by 10% for each Gravelord ability on your skill bar. So this one sounds pretty cool as well. I imagine that half second cooldown is there just to stop you from popping multiple corpses at the same time. One thing I noticed is that it doesn't say it scales off weapon or spell damage, so it does seem like that tooltip is what you get. However, it will still scale with with percent boosts and also that special percent increase that is written into the set as well. Great two to four piece bonuses also. The only thing I'm kind of unsure of is how you'll be able to consistently trigger it. Maybe using something like detonating siphon as a semi spammable. We'll see though. This one is another cool idea, but we'll probably need lots of testing to see how it plays out. Next up is the Nightblade set, Umbral Edge. When you cast the Shadow ability, you gain Umbral Repost for three seconds, up to once every six seconds. This causes you to dodge the next attack made against you and automatically curses the attacking enemy, applying Major Vulnerability for five seconds, increasing their damage taken by 10%. So this one definitely seems interesting for PvP and also for PvE tanking. Major Vulnerability is a really nice debuff for a support to keep up. However, this does appear to be a single target application and it has a theoretical max of 83% uptime if you timed it perfectly. If we compare that to Turning Tide, it's a little less max uptime on that one, but it does work in an AoE. The free dodge is definitely nice, but I'm not sure overall that the set is as OP as some people thought when they were initially looking at it. For PvP, maybe it's OP. I'm not sure in that department yet, but for PvE, I think it actually seems pretty reasonably tuned. Honestly, I could probably see it buffed up even a little bit more on the PvE side of things, and it still wouldn't be overpowered. Next up, the Sorcerer set, Beacon of Oblivion. While you have a pet active, gain 1840 health and 1980 armor. While you do not have a pet active, increase your damage done to monsters and healing done by 15%. So this is a pretty cool idea for a set as well. I do appreciate them continually trying to add in some new toys for the non-pet Sorks out there. So let's start with that side of things. We'll focus on the non-pet side first, and then we'll go to the pet side later, since this is sort of two sets in one. At first glance, I didn't really like the two to four piece bonuses, but after spending some time thinking on it, that 15% damage done bonus actually kind of makes up for those two early bonuses lacking damage. So I decided to present it in a little bit different way here. I shuffled up the bonuses and rewrote it. Still the same exact set, the same total power, but when you look at it this way, I think it seems a bit more appealing. Essentially, instead of thinking about losing those damage done bonuses, think about it as getting the free health and armor bonuses with a 9% damage done bonus on that five piece. Looks like a really stacked five piece bonus when you put it this way. I do think it should have some PVP application too though. It's kind of bad that it's just left out for damage there. Obviously the whole 15% would be way too strong for PVP, but maybe it could be an 8% damage done bonus, which doubles against monsters. I think this would be fair for both PVP and PVE. One of the big drawbacks though, is that even if you play a non-pet Sork, every time that you use your attribute Atronach ultimate that counts as a summoned pet and you lose your conditional bonuses. I really think that the conditional stuff they've been adding in should only apply to permanent 
summoned pets. It's kind of weird to go back and forth between these in combat based on your ultimate or if your monster set procs with something like Maw the Infernal it would make a lot more sense to me as a sort of permanent toggle in combat based on if you have one of the permanent pets out or not. All that said though, even with this condition, I think it's a really solid set for non-pet sorks out there. It still won't quite bring them up to pet sork level for single target damage, but it is another tool to at least close the gap some. And then finally for the pet sork side of things, I found the conditional bonus to be kind of underwhelming. It isn't bad to have more health and armor, of course, but as a five piece bonus, this just feels a little boring to have that small serving of health and armor. So I definitely like to see something a little bit more creative and enticing there for those that like to run pets. All right, next we have the Templar set, Etheric Lancer. Dealing damage with burning light twice within 30 seconds summons a spear that implants itself in a five meter area for five seconds. This effect can occur once every six seconds. While standing in the area, dealing damage with an Adric Spear ability launches the spear at your target, dealing 4887 magic damage and applying Sundered to your target. Throwing the spear increases your weapon and spell damage by 300 for six seconds. So when I first read this on the live stream, for some reason my brain went to power of the light as that initial condition instead of burning light and I went off on a whole tangent with that being the trigger but then I reread it later and I was like oh derp that's the passive they're talking about there so it does change things a little bit from my initial reaction burning light on paper looks like it should proc every two seconds but it does seem a little bit closer to that two and a half second mark on average I do also have some questions about how that will trigger exactly when the six second cooldown ends do I need just one more proc of burning light since the previous proc would have been within 30 seconds or do I always need two procs in a row after each six second cooldown. I guess what I'm trying to say is, does it consider previous procs of burning light that were before the cooldown was up? The tooltip just says the spear being summoned can happen once every six seconds. So optimistically, the first time you need two procs of burning light to trigger this, but then after that, only one each time because the previous proc will still have been within 30 seconds. Hope that makes sense. Regardless, it definitely will need some testing here to see exactly how that works. But really my main concern here is the trigger condition for launching the spear, dealing damage with an Adric spear ability. This is really fine for pre-execute as you'll usually have your jabs going to trigger it or your blazing spear which is often slotted on builds that don't use jabs. However, these skills generally get dropped in execute and would be a rather large DPS loss to continue casting to meet the conditions for this set. So for PvE DPS, it seems like it would need to be really good up front to warrant that damage loss in execute. Or another suggestion is to make blazing spear a 20 second skill instead of 10 seconds. The dot on blazing spear is pitiful anyway so it's not like stretching that out to 20 seconds would be adding any real damage but this would make it much less of a dps loss to try to keep up during execute having to waste a gcd every 10 seconds instead of beaming is pretty brutal but every 20 seconds would be much more doable you could also use your radial sweep ultimate to keep this up and execute if you have no other skill going but probably wouldn't be up 100 percent against a single target it's generally a dps loss over front barring dawnbreaker Overall, I think the idea for the set sounds really cool. I didn't even mention the 300 weapon and spell damage that you also get. Just a solid damage set all around. With a few small tweaks, I think it could be a great one for Templars to pick up for single target damage. Next up, we have the Warden set, Ares Cry. Dealing damage with a light attack applies Eagle's Mark to your target for 12 seconds. This effect can occur once every three seconds, but cannot be applied to enemies who already have Eagle's Mark. You can have one Eagle's Mark active at a time. After three seconds, an Eagle attacks your target every three seconds, dealing 2485 physical damage each strike. Increase your damage done with Animal Companion abilities by 10% against enemies with Eagle's Mark. So this one's pretty straightforward, and if the math holds up from Finn's weapon and spell damage amount, the proc should deal about 85 to 90 percent of the damage of something like Pillar of Nern. So you get that plus the 10 percent companion ability increase together. I think for single target damage, this could become a staple for Warden DPS. Looks to be a really solid set, and I like the idea of them adding in an eagle to the Warden's arsenal of companions. Then finally, we have the Arcanist set, Spattering Disjunction. When you hit an enemy with a snare or a mobilize ability, apply two random status effects to your target. This effect can occur once every six seconds. Dealing damage with the Herald of Tome ability reduces the cooldown by 0.5 seconds up to once every one second. So as long as you're dealing damage with abilities in the skill line, it should be more like a four second cooldown, which lines up perfectly with the length of status effects. I think this one is pretty interesting. There are quite a few abilities in the Herald of Tome skill line that snare or immobilize, so it should be very 
very easy to always keep it up. For PvE DPS, I don't really see this competing with other damage options, maybe in the infinite archive, but even there, there are sets that you can use to probably guarantee more status procs than this. It does seem like it could be nice for PvP. Personally, I'd like to see them put a bit more juice into this one though, maybe another creative twist on that five piece bonus that ties in with status effects on top of the two guaranteed procs every four seconds or so. So overall, I'm really impressed with these new entries into the Infinite Archive sets, especially compared to the first bunch we got. They seem a lot more straightforward and useful. I would still like to see these converted someday to something other than five-piece sets. I'd also love to see some tweaks to the first round of sets from here too, but I can't really find much to complain about with what we've seen so far from the latest batch. But that's not all for the new stuff that we'll be getting. They did mention some quality of life improvements coming to the base game, so let's quickly run through those as well. First up, you can now preview more aspects of a mount. So you'll have the idle, walking, running, mounting up, and rearing up. So a lot of mounts have special things they do with these, so it'll be really nice to be able to see beforehand what those are. Next, they're gonna be adding in some new sourcing for luminous ink, treasure chests, and heavy sacks are both being added in as possible sources to obtain it. Next up, they're adding in six new skill stylings that are obtainable in game. The first three here you'll get from fragment chases. They didn't mention where these fragments would be, but if I had to guess, I think they would be added into the infinite archive, but we'll have to wait and see on that. We have yellow color for silver bolts, green for roar, and yellow for annulment. And then the other three are purchasable with undaunted keys. They didn't mention a price on those. We have the lilac purple twin slashes, the yellow momentum, and then the purple elemental storm we did get a preview of here. All six of these will also be alternatively sourced through archival fortunes and the rotation on that weekly vendor in there. So another small quality of life update, the game will now remember your last guild bank or guild store session. So if you have one guild that you use mostly for those types of activities, you don't have to always select it each time you log in and go to that menu. It'll automatically go to the last one you visited. So just a small little quality of life thing there. And then finally, we have some additional loot sources that will get curated item set drops. Finn said PVP bags. The website mentioned the Imperial City vendors here, but I imagine the Cyrodiil ones will probably count as well. And then also the weekly trial rewards. I'm not sure if this refers to the coffer that you open or the weekly leaderboard or maybe both. I would love to see the coffers start dropping perfected gear if completed on veteran though. I think that would be a nice quality of life change for those farming up trial gear. And then the long requested monster set shoulder bags, the five key ones have been renamed to curated bags. So these are the purple ones. And then those blue one key mystery bags will still be random and not curated. So overall, pretty nice set of changes coming with update 43. I figured there would be this housing feature with a few quality of life improvements, but I'm pretty impressed. This was a bit more than I was expecting for a free update. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you all think about the changes coming up in Update 43. I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The memberships really help a ton to keep this channel and the website going. Can't thank y'all enough. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, The Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blake1816, Mordecai 1212, Santonico, Vadridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Chris Eliana, Cha Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, Pron and Cladic. Thanks again and see you later. Uh, bye.